So for the final lecture uh, in the Revit portion of this course, we went over schedules and um, making callouts. Uh, and so both of these are pretty simple things to do. This video shouldn't take too long, so let's go ahead and get started. And let's jump into making a new schedule. So open your project browser. Let's go to schedules here. And if we right-click schedules, we can go to that first option there to say make a new schedule or quantity. So we'll make a new schedule here. Uh, and then you can see that you have a whole bunch of different categories that Revit will allow you to select from. Um, and we want to scroll down, and I'm going to do a pipe family or a pipe schedule right now. So I'm going to go to pipes, and so I'm going to make a schedule that's going to give me, um, at least this is what I want to do. I want to make a schedule that's going to give me uh, all the different types of pipes I'm using, whether it be hot water supply, cold water supply, or sanitary. Those pipe sizes and those pipe lengths as well. Um, so once we click that, you can see that Revit gives it a name automatically, a pipe schedule, that's fine. Um, schedule building components is what we want to do, and we'll just leave it as new construction. So we can hit OK. Um, and then now you'll see here in the field, you can choose which fields you want to include in this, uh, in this schedule here. Um, so in this schedule, we want to include four things. And the first thing I want to include is the system classification. So we'll scroll down all the way to system classification here, and then we can just choose to add that into the fields that we're going to be scheduling. Okay, then we can scroll up. I also want to include the count, so how many of these there are. Hit add. Uh, I want to include the size, so we'll scroll down to size, and we'll add that. And then I also want to include the length, and add that as well. Okay, so the order of these in here does matter, and the reason it does is because this is going to be the order that it'll put these scheduling columns in. So when we make this spreadsheet, the first thing that's going to show up is its system classification, followed by size, followed by or followed by count, followed by size, then followed by the length. Okay, so once we've done that, we can look at these other tabs here. Uh, the filter tab will allow you to uh, filter different things out if you don't want to show a certain type of pipe or something like that. But we're not going to worry about that. Um, let's go to sorting here, and so we have to tell Revit how we want these organized, how we want to sort them. So the first thing I'm going to sort it by is by system classification. And then we can just say we want it to be ascending, which means that it's just going to go uh, in alphabetical order based on its system classification. Uh, then after that, I want to sort it by the pipe size. So the, uh, the diameter of the pipe, I want all those to be grouped together uh, in the correct order. And then finally, I want each thing to be, uh, to be filtered by the length. So now you can see we have system classification, size, and length. And all of these are going to be recorded um, for each pipe segment we have in our model. Uh, the last thing we need to do is uncheck this box right here that says itemize every instance. And what that does is it just makes it so that every single pipe in the project is going to be uh, displayed in its own, uh, in its own row. Uh, if we have identical pipes, though, there's really no point in itemizing every instance. So if we uncheck that, let's say if we have five pipes that are hot water supply half inch and exactly five and a half feet, um, we'll, just have all, we'll just have all that in one row with a count number of five. Okay, and then I'll let you guys play around with formatting appearance if you want to. Um, the standard Revit settings for those are just fine though, so I'm not going to worry about that. So we'll hit OK, and that'll bring us into our new schedule here, right here. Um, and if we make these a little bit bigger, we can see everything that it's describing to us. So it's giving us all of our domestic cold water first here, and it's giving us the count so you, you can see that most of the time it's just one. And that's because our length is as precise as the 32nd of an inch. So the chances of, of pipe lengths matching up exactly is it's pretty rare. So sometimes you'll get a few, like a th there's three of those, there's five of those, three of those, etc. Uh, but for, again, for, for the most part, uh, everything is just going to be uh, pretty much uh, by itself. So there you go, you can see uh, what that's done now. And uh, if you want to find this, uh, schedule. It's in your project browser now, and it's under schedule slash quantities. So if we want to take this and put this onto a sheet, I'm going to make a new sheet. And sheets right here. Right click and say new sheet. We'll say title block for class. Um, and I can just, you know, rename this sheet something like P0-1. Oh, sorry, 0-2 I should probably use because I already used that one. Um, I'll call it plumbing schedules, and you guys can worry about filling in the rest of the information. Um, and I'll also just put this as a 
plumbing right now. Okay, but anyway, so when you finish making the sheet that you want to put this on, it works just the same as putting a view on a sheet. You'll go over here and you'll just drag it into place, and then you'll click where you want to put it on that sheet. So you can see that uh, this is a pretty big schedule here, and it looks really small, but again, remember that our sheet is, is, is a pretty large sheet. You know, it's 22 inches in this direction, it's 17 inches in this direction, so if we, if we scroll in, yeah, it's pretty small, and it might, it might be kind of tough to read on the sheet, but if it's the Revit standard, it's most likely going to be okay. Um, but again, if you want to change that text size, that would be under formatting of the, uh, of the schedule. Um, so you, some of you guys might have made enough pipe that your schedule extends off of the sheet. Like you, the, the, the height of this, this schedule here is, uh, is too tall to fit on the sheet. If that's ever the case, if you click it right here, you can see right here we have this option to break it. Split schedule table right there, and if you click that, it'll just break your schedule in half, and then you can use this grip right here to determine how uh, much you want per uh, schedule column. So schedules are as simple as that. You can go through and make the other four schedules required of you guys uh, for the assignment. It shouldn't be too difficult. Um, so the last thing you want to do is go over how to make a callout. And so the point of a callout is to uh, is to show a user where either a detail is occurring or where an exploded or a zoomed in floor plan is occurring. Um, on a certain plan. So you can see that I'm asking you guys to do three different callouts. So let's go up to, uh, to one of them here, and I'll go to, let's say, level one West Sanitary, and I'm going to call out my, uh, my trap uh, detail for my drain on one of these uh, drains here. So to get a call out, we'll go to View, and there's the call out option right here. So we'll click Call Out. Before we start drawing the call out, though, we want this call out to reference another view. So by the Revit default, a callout will just make a new view. So for instance, let's say I dragged this box and made the callout around this room right here. Revit would make an entirely separate floor plan that's just this room. And it would call it a callout, and then you could you know, draw some extra things in there um, to get a more detailed idea of what's happening in that room. A lot of times we use callouts for things like mechanical rooms or, uh, or electrical rooms or things like that. Um, but anyway, so we're, we're going we're gonna to use this callout to reference another view that we've already drawn. Because we said we want to use this callout to reference the detail of our, uh, our, of our drain trap. So we'll say we're going to reference another view with this, and that means now that we're not going to be creating a view when we make this callout. And we can say which, uh, which view that we're actually uh, calling out here. So we said we're calling out our floor drain piping drafting view, right? That's our detail. So we'll click that one there. Then we'll, uh, we'll create our, our, uh, our call out. I'm just going to put it kind of like right around there. Um, and the last thing we need to do is we need to give this call out a, uh, a label. So just like when you guys were working with, uh, with grids or when you were working with levels and they didn't have a, a head associated with them, you had to load it in. That's the same thing for callouts. Currently it doesn't have a head associated with it, so we're going to have to load that in. So let's go to insert, load family. And once we load our family, we can scroll down. Um, or I'm sorry, no, we don't want to scroll down, we want to go to annotations. Uh, so we go to imperial, annotations, and then we'll go to this one right here, just the callout head. The standard callout head is perfectly fine, so we can open that up. So now if we click our callout, we can go to edit type. Uh, we want to do the callout tag right here, so we'll hit dot 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 there, and we'll say that our callout head is now going to be a callout head. We hit OK, hit OK. And now you can see we have this callout head here that we can move around to put it into a place that's easily readable, maybe like right there. And so you can see what this callout does is uh, it'll tell the user uh, what sheet right here, P0-1, that detail is on, and then what uh, drawing number that detail is. So if we, it, this is telling us if we go to sheet P01 and go to the first drawing, we'll find a detail about this part of the uh, project right here. So let's do that really quick. We'll go down to our sheets, we'll go to P0-1, and we'll go to our first drawing, and exactly that's, that's where it is. That's where that, uh, that detail is located. Okay, so that should do it for this lecture. Again, not too difficult. Um, hopefully it'll, uh, it'll go pretty quickly, and you guys can spend the rest of your time finishing up drawing your pipes uh, and your structure and getting everything ready to be submitted for the final project.